am Vijay Prakash. Last time we had learnt about what is creativity. Today I am going to talk about what are the strategies for developing creativity in learners. Last time when we studied it, we had discussed what is creativity, how it can be developed, what are the theoretical perspectives of creativity and now we are going to work out a strategy, practical strategy which can be implemented in the schools and at home. There are two different types of materials we have. There are certain techniques which can directly develop creativity. But there are certain techniques which can be used as an instruction material to develop creativity. These techniques and tools or materials can be linked to curricular activities such as language, science, mathematics, social science and also the so-called co-curricular activities, arts, music, sports, etc. And we shall see how these things can go together and we will try to find out what best can we do without disturbing the normal activities of the class. Before we move ahead, let's try to understand one of the important features of the studies that has been done in the field of intelligence in the last few decades. Earlier, we used to learn that there was only one intelligence, either people are intelligent or they are dull. But now it has been found basically by the researches of Howard Gardner that we have not one but many intelligences. That means everybody will have different patterns of intelligence and this, this is found in life also. There are many people who are intelligent in say uh, music like Lata Mangeshkar. She may not be good in uh, other things like verbal or logical or some player like Sachin Tendulkar or MS Dhoni, they are good at kinesthetic but may not be good at rhythmic intelligence or verbal or logical intelligence. So we have different types of intelligence. So let us try to understand how many types of intelligence we have now. We have verbal intelligence which is linked with words. This is what we learn in language basically. We have logical intelligence that is linked to numbers and lines that is basically mathematical intelligence. Then we have spatial intelligence, this is pictorial intelligence related to pictures and colors. Then we have kinesthetic intelligence, it is basically related to body movements. A sportsman normally have this intelligence. Then we have rhythmic intelligence, people who are good at music or songs, they have better rhythmic intelligence. Then we have interpersonal intelligence, those who like to work in a group, who like to stay in a group, they feel uncomfortable when they are alone, but there are other people who want to live alone, to be alone, they feel uncomfortable in groups, they are intrapersonal intelligence, they learn about themselves more than they learn about others. And then we have natural intelligence, which is learning about nature, learning in nature, these people are comfortable playing in nature and so you have different types of intelligence now and all these intelligences is not that they are present in everybody or they are not present in, uh, in a person. In fact, all intelligences are present either uh, in some quantity or more quantity in every individual. So there is a pattern of intelligence now, it is not one intelligence. There is a pattern of intelligence. Right now what is happening is we are focusing more on verbal and logical intelligence and ignoring others. We have served other things uh, to be taken care of in co-scholastic areas or co-scholastic activities and we focus more on uh, verbal and logical intelligence in scholastic activities. This is not true and different uh, requirement of different children are not taken care of by this method. In fact, the multiple intelligence theory leads us to, to find out 
that every person has a unique learning style which is based on their natural intelligence patterns. This is a group of uh, intelligence, a pattern of intelligence which a person has and if a person is taught that way, they will produce more, they will be better. But if they are not um, taught that way, then they would not learn better, they cannot produce their best. So, and uh, one of the other uh, findings that this intelligence theory has, multiple intelligence theory has, is that if we use multimedia approach in learning programs, then all the different requirements of different uh, intelligence patterns are taken care of because different media are linked to different intelligence patterns. So, if we have to reconstruct our class, if you have to make our class uh, creative, then we will have to move towards more and more media situation you know. and the, our activities should be such that we can take care of the different requirements of le uh, different learning styles of the learners. So, based on this, Today what we will do is, we will try to find out activities, frame activities which can be introduced in class without much hassles and uh, uh, so that uh, a creative environment is created which is supportive of the development of creativity of learners. So let us see the activities one by one. The first activity that we will take up is uh, called brainstorming. This is an interesting activity which was developed by a famous psychologist called Alex Osborne. When he studied the psychology of people, he said that when ideas are generated, I mean it is not that ideas are not generated by people, ideas are being generated, but as soon as they are generated, people discard them, considering them superfluous or impractical, they often think, Are log kya kahenge? what will people think and then they just discard it. I mean they, they do not retain the ideas. So, what happens is as soon the idea die before it is generated and uh, it is it takes birth. So, he divided thinking into two stages. One is the ideation stage where idea is generated and the other is the evaluation stage where ideas are evaluated. And in both stages, if we separate both stages and in the first stage when the ideas are generated, evaluation is postponed, evaluation is not done, then you have got large number of ideas and after you have collected the ideas, then you are free to go for second stage and when you evaluate the ideas and the select the correct idea. How will we introduce it in our classroom? Make a group of 6 to 8 persons learners and they should sit in a circle, normally a circle arrangement is uh, appears to be good and then find out a problem of interest. These problems should be such where the information is readily available to the children. If the information is not available, provide them with the information so that they are prepared. Normally, it would be better if the problem is given beforehand and they are asked to study and collect relevant information beforehand. This problem can be say suppose uh, we have a problem, what are the problems faced by children at home or at school, particularly you can confine to girl children or you can have uh, problems what should children do during summer vacation. I mean these kind of simple problems of children should be taken because these are the problems where children can contribute. So this is the first stage where we have explained the problem. Now we come to the second stage. What happens in the second stage? Second stage, there will be free generation of ideas without restriction, crazy ideas, funny ideas, costly ideas, no idea is rejected, no criticism done, even self criticism is not allowed. You should not, everybody is told that you should not criticize your own ideas, but that is the biggest problem in generation of ideas. You can even Combine your idea with others ideas. So, this is also not permitted, it is not that idea is idea in a group is uh, monopoly of a few persons or uh, monopoly of one person. Everybody is free to take um, others ideas and improve upon it or add to it. So, this way 
large number of ideas are generated, more the merrier. And if you have large number of ideas, then you are in a position to go to the third stage. And what will happen in the third stage? Third stage, you will discuss each of the problem ideas one by one. We have to shortlist the important ideas which needs further attention. And maybe we may have another brainstorming to find out their solution. So you have three stages. In first stage is the problem or understanding stage. Second stage is free generation of idea stage. And third generation is evaluation stage where you have shortlisted and prioritized your problem ideas and then you go for solution. If you want to go to solution, then you again have the same stages and then uh, you can find out a solution. This way, a large number of children can participate and solve one problem. This way, everybody learns from each other and the basic idea behind brainstorming is, it's not brain, it's one brain, but it is uh, multiple brains that works together and that is synchronized. Then we come to how we can innovate an object, how we can uh, design a new object. It is very simple and we shall see how in schools it can be fruitfully utilized. So let us see, any object, take any object, say a calendar or a pen, everything has an attribute, has some qualities, characteristic qualities. We should list down all those attributes, all those qualities, characteristic qualities. And once this has been done, you can change one or more attributes and then you get a new design. It's so simple. You list the attributes and then change one or more attributes. Let's see by an example. Suppose you have a calendar. What is a calendar? Calendar is basically a display of day and date in, a, in the form of a chart. It may have different shapes. It may have different decorative items. It may be of different color. It may have month-wise messages or pictures. It may have the base which is different, maybe of paper, maybe of uh, say clothes, maybe of say wood or whatever it is. Or the hanging or placing of the calendar may be of different type. It may be hung on the wall, it may be kept on a table. So, I mean, this way different calendars can be designed. So, if any one of the attributes are changed, suppose the, the display of day and date or the nature of the chart is changed, you have a different calendar. If you shape of the calendar is changed, then you have a different calendar. If the decoration is changed, if the painting is changed, if the color is changed, if the messages or monthly paintings are changed, then you have different calendars. So, so this way or if you change the base matter or hanging or placing of car calendar, then you get different designs. Let us see a few designs. Just see how School of Creative Learning, this has been used as uh, designing of an innovative calendar. Similarly, you can see another uh, innovative calendar which is uh, on your screen where the calendar is in the form of a puzzle. This is quite interesting. So you can have any type of calendar made if you just change the attribute. This is very simple. Now let us see. Can you have innovative calendars for your school? Yes, we can have a school calendar which will have uh, holidays mentioned, exemption dates mentioned, monthly themes mentioned and other things related to schools. You can have a great calendar for the village where you can have seasonal plan of cultivation, harvesting, sale and things like that anything related to a farmer. You can have different shapes of calendar, maybe a hexagonal calendar or a circular calendar, whatever it is. You can have wooden calendar or a metallic calendar. So all these will give you new ideas of calendar and you can design it. Then we come to how languages can be used for developing creativity. Let us see, when we were children, our parents, grandparents and other people in the community, they used to give us lot of puzzles and riddles. They have lot of folk puzzles and riddles which, is, which circulates in the community. And whenever we met anybody, they will just ask you puzzles and riddles. I we were rather surprised why they are doing so. But this was the best way to develop the brain for creativity. In fact, there is a book called Leelawati. This was written by Bhaskaracharya in the 
to commemorate her is daughter Leelawati. And the book is fantastic, where even the problems are given in slokas. It's mathematical problems, puzzles given in the form of a sloka. And uh, they are beautiful puzzles. What we have seen is, many scientists like Edison or any scientist you name, they are generally very fond of solving puzzles. Or even Feynman, they are great uh, uh, world class scientists. They used to play with puzzles and riddles. So, if we collect puzzles and riddles from magazines and newspapers, which are plethora of them, you can always have uh, a kitty ready which can be used in the school and children can play with it. Now, I will tell you a few games, simple games, which can be played in the elementary school level. This is guess the animal. You have card where pictures of animals are pasted and uh, then what you do is divide the children into um, pairs. One has the card and he gives some clues regarding which animal is there on the card. He can tell the clues orally but does not show the picture or does not name the uh, animal and the partner has to guess the name of the animal. Clues can be like it lives in forest, it is a non-vegetarian, etc, etc. And if he, she or he guesses the name correctly, then he can pick up the other card and the game goes on. This kind of activities can be done in various setups, like you can have what is it game, where you have cards on a monument, monuments, you collect different pictures of historical monuments or historical places on a card. And then again, it is a pair game, one learner picks up the card, but now he does not have to speak, he can only mime, he can act without uttering the word and shows the picture. And within a limited period, say one minute, he can give certain clues to the partner who has to guess the place. If he guesses it, then he moves on to another card. Now tell you another uh, interesting activity that is called observer room. This is very important for a creative person to be observant. He should clearly, he should go and observe in detail as uh, power of observation is one of the most important tool that a creative person has. So, learners are taken to a new room or a new garden or a place where they have not gone earlier and then they are asked to observe the room carefully and they are again back to the original room. Now, when the, they are back, then they are told that you have to make a list of activities that they have seen in the room. They can make a list of say goods or activities whatever they have seen in the in another room or in another place or garden. They can also be asked that they, they can paint uh, whatever they have seen. They can be asked whether they can make some models whatever they have seen in the room or in the garden. The, so, different kinds of multiple intelligence people will be or learning style different people of different learning style will be able to do as per their own choice. They can either make the list of activities or they can make painting or they can make a model or things like that as per their own choice. So, and then learners are asked to paint or do whatever it is what they want to do. They can also organize a questioning based on whatever they have seen there. So, this way they, they will be more observant, they will be able to see much more than they are doing right now. Another game that can be planned uh, in a school says is forming new word patterns in a sentence. This is a very interesting game and it lays foundation for uh, divergent thinking. Suppose there is a sentence, I am going home. The new patterns can be, am I going home? Going home, I am. Home, I am going. So, these are different patterns. It may have more patterns, but what it does is, it opens up your mind that I am going home is not the only construction that we can have. We can have several other constructions and if you have several other constructions, then you can play with it and come out with a new sentence formation uh, in different circumstances. When you are writing poem, then different kinds of uh, sentence formation will be quite helpful. Similarly, story writing and poem writing. 
these are two very important tools that we can use for development of creativity in schools. Say, a story writing should start quite early in life. We have seen that children are creative and if they are asked to tell a story, they will create a story on their own and uh, that will be, there you can see their creative expression comes to the fore. So how to make them write a stories? They can be given some clue like they can be asked to see a picture and write a story. They can be asked to see a picture or half finished story on TV and then complete the picture or they can be given a half a story, finished a story and then complete the picture. Uh, and I have found that in uh, the case of TV, this is quite interesting that if they are shown some video or asked that uh, they should see the serial and then guess the next part of the serial or next part of the story, then children come out with different kinds of finishing of the story. And then they should be shown whatever has been written in the original story. And that gives them the idea how the, uh, how the finishing should go about. This way, uh, they can write beautiful stories. They can even give, be given simple hints and based on that, they can write a stories. Even a flying cat, if you say you should write a, a story on flying cat or a moving doll or something like that. I mean, that will give them some clue where they can proceed and they proceed. Even sayings and uh, uh, can be used for writing a story, for the title of the story. They should also be initiated into writing different titles of uh, the stories. Similarly, we come to poem writing. Poem writing can be based on keywords. Maybe they can be asked forest, river, man or uh, multi-story building, uh, garden and some extra thing uh, lift and then they, they will compose some kind of poem based on that. These are all imaginary things you can put to them. You can also say uh, that you should write a poem on say, if I wear a land and they will come out with beautiful poems uh, themselves you know. So th they can be asked that they should compose a, a, a poem on the recent activity that has taken place in their neighborhood or the village. I mean, uh, when we gave it to the children, they wrote a beautiful poem on the elections that was uh, held in the village. So our effort should be that we should start poem and story writing activity from lower class itself. It may not be writing as such. It may be oral rhyming and oral stories that should be practiced first. And later on, it can be converted into uh, a story of, say, written story or uh, in other form. They can even write pictorial stories. That is also important. So now I'll come to another uh, interesting creative activity. That is called pictorial word games. What is pictorial word games? It's a collection of words that is put into a form of a picture, like. This is called Sabdhar or word garland. What is word garland? One word is related to other word, second word is related to the third word and this way a garland is made and a garland is put into the form of a picture. It can be in the shape of say uh, the last letter of the first word becomes the first letter of the second word and so on. So this is one way. There can be say the attributes of any object is put on the as different words on the petals of the sabdhar that can be done or say attributes of the person of any person maybe a teacher maybe a principal or a minister or a, a farmer that is put on the different petals of the uh, word garland and then it can be can become a good memento to be given to those people so and at a school of creative learning, this is used as an important memento to be given to the guests. You can see it in practical how it is given and uh, uh, you can see in a video also. Now let's see how we can initiate creativity in children. One of the main restrictions on the mind of children is the closed-ended questions or 
what we say convergent thinking questions. If we can move from convergent thinking to open ended and divergent thinking questions, then we initiate children into the realm of creativity. In this case, I have a few suggestions. Let us see. We ask children to write the names of flowers. We say, write the name of two flowers, three fruits, or whatever it is, two animals, anything of that sort, you know, where you write fruits, vegetables, and things like that. And what happens when we put this two, three, or things like that? What happens is we put restrictions on their ability to know more about the fruits and flowers. What happens when the uh, mother is trying to get her homework done? Then the, uh, she will ask that now we have written the name of two fruits. You should proceed to flowers. Forget about the fruits. So he does not know the name of the third fruit. He is not interested. Why can't we remove this barrier? If we can remove this barrier, then we open out the mind of the child. Can we have a question that collect the names of all animals seen during the week? Collect the names of all flowers that you have seen in last month? Collect the names of all the seeds that you can find in your neighborhood? Why can't you liberate the child from thinking? This is important. Then only children can be creative. This is important. So let's move to another part of where we can improve the creativity of a child. Questioning is the key to curiosity. Questioning leads to curiosity. If we can develop questioning rather than answering alone, then we initiate them into the realm of creativity. This can be easily done. Start doing this in a picture. We can have large number of questioning sessions, different types of questioning sessions. So why can't you have a picture or any other object? Then children raise questions and other group answers, maybe in pair or maybe in a group. So questioning should be initiated as a program. It's not only answering. It's not that teacher teacher raises question and um, child answers. It should be the other way around at times. Here, questioning from one child to another, another child to the one, or even questioning to the teacher. So if we can have a questioning session properly, questioning program for questioning session, that will initiate children to creativity. This can be easily done in the form of a classroom cricket. And this was a beautiful game design where children are divided into two groups. One group asks questions and other group replies. If they are able to re reply properly, the batting team replies and bowling team questions, then they get certain points and th that points can be kept on the scoreboard. This is a simple game that can be easily tried in a school. Now let's see what can be done in mathematics. I will give you illustrations of a few games and uh, you can probably add to large number of such games that is possible in this school. Let us see the number chart. We have large number of number charts that we play, but normally number charts are not related to colors. Now suppose multiples of 2 is painted in red color in the number chart from 1 to 100, then you will see that the multiples follow a parallel a pattern of parallel lines, just like the movement of rooks in a chessboard. Not exactly the same, but similar. So if this is the pattern that you have, you can always find out the quality of the patterns and the attributes of the multiples of twos based on these patterns. You will definitely see that the two follows, uh, the multiples of two only has 2, 4, 6, 8 and 0 in their units place. If you see the multiples of 3 on the same chart, it will be diagonal and they follow a different number patterns. So, and this is just like a movement of bishop on the uh, chessboard. So, if you see this and if you, you can always find out divisibility rule based on the study of pattern of these numbers. If you see the multiples of 4 on a number chart, 
they follow a pattern of a knight, movement of a knight on the chessboard. So, this is quite similar. So, every number, number uh, chart gives you uh, different types of patterns that you have. You can play the same game pattern of wavy arrangement of the numbers on a number chart and then you will get different patterns. What is, what are we trying to do here? We are not only playing with numbers, we are laying the foundation of web designing in the mind of the child. This is how, how a screen behaves if I put a certain pattern or certain mathematical logic into it. So, so this is a simple thing which initiates large number of creative dimensions to it. Let us see another example of activity. When we say 5 plus 6 is 11, this is a case of convergent thinking that we have learnt. Can we do the other way around? Can we find out all the numbers which either adds, subtracts, multiplies or divides and leads us to 16? That will be the number family of 16. And this can be shown in the form of a flower which has a flower tree which has different branches of say addition, subtraction, division and multiplication or maybe mixed. So, uh, different branches can come together and then, then your mind starts working towards finding out various kinds of patterns that leads to the number 16. This becomes a number family game, an interesting game which helps you in develop divergent thinking. You can have innovative floor games like this one where you write on the floor or uh, 3 into 3 size of floor square pattern and write in them 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and 128. Then children are asked to jump to any number and add it to any number maybe up to 255. You can say them that you find out 100 out of it or find out 155 out of it and they will have to jump and play with it. This can be done and different children can play together. One children, child can raise questions and the other can answer. And the beauty of these, this floor game is that it can be played even after the school is closed. And once the children have interest in it, they can start playing this. Another form of floor game is very interesting, where the floor game is only of five numbers where you can jump to add and subtract up to 121. So this, all this game here, you write 1, 3, 9, 27 and 81 and you can jump to say 100 or 115 and then play with the numbers. So this simple play of numbers help children to go for divergent thinking exercises in a very simple way, simple and innovative way. You can also have innovative wall writing and suppose you have a stairs, on the wall you write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up a stairs and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 down stairs and if you move up this is plus, if you move down it is minus. So this is innovative wall writing and uh, through this one can easily initiate addition and subtraction and also negative numbers, negative numbers, concept of negative numbers is extremely difficult to obtain. But this way you can easily obtain the concept of negative numbers and uh, then children can play with it, they can move up, move down and uh, they also learn, not only learn uh, negative numbers, they can also play with it. Now I come to social science. In social science, you have to relate to society. One of the best exercises that I have seen is to click photographs and children love to do photography and now we have access to mobiles where you have camera with you, then children should be asked to go to museum, visit historical places or villages and try to capture as many photographs as possible. This will be a great treasure uh, which, through which they can relate to the community. They can click the photograph of his father right from morning to evening in different activities that he performs. He will be 
able to learn about more about professions by remaining with his father or with any of the relatives and uh, learn about what, uh, what are the subtle nuances of those professions simply by clicking photographs. Another good tool of learning can be genealogical table. Genealogical, I mean your names of grandparents, parents and great grandparents, everything is written in the form of a table. When we introduced this into the classes, we were surprised that none of the students came out with the name of their mothers, I mean up to mothers they could write, maybe up to grandmothers, but nothing beyond that. Nobody wrote about their grandmothers or great grandmothers. So, I mean this was a surprising fact when all the genealogical tables were put on the wall and everybody, I mean immediately their, their reaction was that can't we have the names of females in genealogical table? Even in 21st century, I, I don't think any other exercise can relate to the, uh, the issue, gender issue uh, in respect of the family in a better way than genealogical table. If you can put their names and study their names, this can be a great tool for learning social studies and relate to the people. This can also be used by learning, I mean, how people have died, how, how the development of literacy has taken place, how the people have started learning more, or how the division of property has been taken up. I mean, genealogical table can be of great use in various kinds of social um, learning activities that can be undertaken. Similarly, surveys are very important tools for social learning. One of the simple surveys that can be taken up is family as a first school. What did we learn in the family or what did we learn where? Where we did we learn about our toiletry? Where did we learn about uh, walking? How did we learn about wearing dresses? Who, who taught us uh, eating food? Who taught us drink, drinking milk and things like that? I mean, anything that uh, we are doing right now, who told you how to brush? I mean, these kind of list you can make and ask the children to go and survey who taught you these things. And you'll be surprised that they will come out with more or less similar result that they have learned most of the things from their mothers. And what best method can you have to relate to your mother other than this, this simple survey? I mean, you are obliged to your mother for teaching you uh, so many things. Other good way to learn about uh, uh, society is through role plays. And not only role plays, I will also say doll plays. Doll plays and role plays can initiate the foundation of creativity and social connectivity uh, in these schools. And this should be initiated as early as possible. Uh, uh, they, they can be beautifully, able. children normally play dolls. They also uh, do role plays in the, their normal way. This has to be brought to the schools. And if you bring it to the schools, you will find that the children will learn a lot of creative ways of expressing themselves, creative ways of decorating their dolls, and also learning about their social relationships expressed through dolls and role plays. Similarly, posters and slogans. Posters and slogans are extremely good method of learning about family, learning about social issues, and the children must be taught how to write slogans, and also to raise slogans. And I have found terrific impact of raising slogans. The children must know raising slogans and this will have great impact on uh, their self-confidence, their speaking ability will in, be enhanced and they will also relate to the social issues. Then we come to another tool that can be used for social learning that is of local news. Children can be asked to collect local news. Initially, they can be explained what is local news, which kind of news they can collect, what are the important uh, events that is happening in their village, which they can keep tap of. And after that, they should start writing in the form of a simple, they can only write one, one sentence or two sentence uh, uh, expression of the event. And once it is collected, it can be pasted on the wall. And you will be surprised how much sensitive they are to the various issues that is happening in their community and this local news or local newspaper you can say can be 
of great uh, value of relating them to the community. Now I come to creativity through science. Science al always has, I mean, we have been learning about laboratories. I am not talking about laboratories right now because laboratories has fixed experiments to be done, although those fixed experiments are also of value, but here I will talk about something else. Let us see, uh, can we play with sand? Can we have sand corners in all schools? This can be of great value. Even a young child, when he is put to sand, he starts playing with it. He will have creative designs on sand when he plays with it. So similarly, when he comes to say middle school level or high school level, even then he can play with sand. He can have models of farming of farms, he can model of ir irrigation, he can have models of uh, geography on sand and sand can be used for various kinds of expression that they can make. So we can have sand corner in, in all the schools and children should be given opportunity to play with it. Similarly, one of the methods that we can adopt is uh, we can have social problem solving sessions and we can ask children to brainstorm and find out which kind of solutions people require for solving their day to day problems. They should collect the problem first which need technological solution or maybe uh, social solution. Let us see first technological solution. They have collected the technological problems. In fact, we can have an alternative method also where we can put the challenging question to them. Just like let us see, they can put, they can be asked, you should, you should prepare a model of a machine to dig the tunnel without disturbing the traffic on the road or you should design an apple picking machine or mango picking machine or a new type of umbrella or a new milk bottle this should, you should design. I mean the, this is the problem posed either you pose the problem or you get the problem from them and both way it works and after the brainstorming has been done after they have fixed up the model let them design the model based on waste products. Why I say waste products because you are quite comfortable with waste products even if it is uh, wasted it does not matter. So, so based on waste products you try to design the first prototype model. Later on you can probably use a better variety or better material to improve upon it and uh, have the proper model. But to start with it is the best material which is quite useful in the uh, school situation. And you can see how many things like even vacuum cleaner or mixi or uh, earth mover and uh, so many other things can be designed when you initiate children into items to be made from waste products. This also leads you to another realm of creativity. You may ask the children to have an idea bank, their own idea bank. Idea keeps on flowing into our mind, I mean every time, everywhere. Always we get an idea, we can design this, we can design that, we can do this, we can do that. I mean, these things come, keep coming in our mind, but it comes and goes. We do not keep a record of it. If children start keeping a small book and pencil with them, a notebook and pencil with them and then write whenever the idea comes, they should write it in the, in the idea bank. Uh, even during sleep they can, they have lot of ideas, so they can keep uh, the notebook and pencil with them when they sleep and when they get up they can immediately write whatever ideas they have got. And these are wonderful ideas which should not be allowed to die down. So, after a few days, they look back on the idea bank and see which, which of these ideas can be developed further and put to practice. This way, lot of innovation can be done and uh, it is possible that many children will be initiated into lot of innovation through idea bank. Another attempt should be tried in the schools is to organize exhibitions. Exhibition is an excellent mode of learning and I prefer it to classroom teaching. Why? Because suppose in classroom somebody demonstrates its model, then whenever he demonstrates its model, then only there will be some reaction. 
but in the exhibition mode he will get reaction every time a new person comes and sees his model he will question him he will give suggestions he will have to narrate to everybody separately and differently so gradually his ability to speak ability about gaining uh, gaining knowledge about the model also improves another big advantage is that this enthuses peer learning so junior student learns how the senior students are making presentation they also learn how the models are which kind of models they are making what which type of materials they are using and then i have seen that even junior class students start making models of very senior students which otherwise would not have taken place when we initiated electric models or working models into schools we found that children were even class 1 or class 2 children were trying to make uh, battery operated models uh, whereas the electricity is taught in class 9th and 10th just because they saw that some senior students were working with the electricity models they they started doing it in their own class so this peer learning is facilitated through exhibition mode of learning another method can be tried is this visualization exercises where i mean here we are teaching science along with visualization the children have become tree they are now seeds they will become tree then they will have fruits and they will die down this is the circle and once they have gone through this visualization exercise if they write about trees then so their writing will be different if they paint their painting will be different so this they can try i mean uh, this kind of visualization exercise this visualization leads us to another realm which we call adrishti adrishti means holistic vision where we see from others point of view in uh, the earlier exercise in the visualization exercise also we saw from the seeds point of view or the trees point of view in this new uh, picture that you are seeing on the screen here we socho kabhi aisa ho to kya ho means whatever we are doing to the oxes if they start doing similar thing to us what will happen whatever we are doing to the nature whatever we are doing to the trees if the tree starts doing the same thing to us what will happen so this is socho kabhi aisa ho to kya ho if similar pictures are drawn and then shown to the children and then they are asked to write to express to paint i mean their whole behavior will change now i come to what we can do through cultural activities we have large number of cultural activities in our society in my mind these cultural activities are basically learning activities they are learning festivals not only cultural festivals why let's see i will give you a few examples in diwali we have gharanda and we uh, make rangolis in say muharram we have tajiyas made and very decorative tajiyas made in uh, christmas we have xmas tree made they are decorated so designing decoration making of models i mean all these things are taught through these these festivals so why can't they be brought to the school if children start making xmas trees if they start making models uh, in diwali or muharram and that will initiate them into some kind of creation through these cultural festivals so this can be an ex- excellent example of bringing creativity to school in the example that you are seeing on the screen you will see several hundred students are working together to have entire floor painted on the occasion of diwali so this is an excellent example of group work excellent example of how the works can be divided how the work division takes place in group situation or how the activities are conducted in a group situation how the decisions are taken in a group situation so these things are learned automatically through these festivals so what we have learned today is the basic strategies for development of creativity in the school situation and uh, i hope that some of these things you will try out in your schools so that 
your school can become a creative school and you are able to to provide a proper proper uh, environment to your children so that they can really become a creative learner thank you